have a minute here? Should be. <laughs> anyway, we're, 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 sti- we're learning Likute Seichel's volume 2, Parshas Dvarim. We want to finish this today. And we're in section 5. What we finished, what we've been learning is, the Rebbe's been telling us um, a mimer from Hillel of Parich, without mentioning that it's from him. And I think, again, the reason was because it was still not published at the time. Um, but then what I saw, I don't know if I told you this on, uh, when, when did you last meet? On Friday, I think. So, about uh, a year after the Rebbe gave the Sicha, in 1955, I believe, or 56, 56, um, they found this, the, they found the mimer from Reb Hillel and they published it in uh, the Morristown Herot uh, Anashvat Mimim. They published it uh, in stencil. So today you can get it free. What happened was, this, this is such a, a, a mind-blowing sicha, or mimer, that uh, not long ago, um, in 2019, uh, Shimon, J- not Shimon, uh, Y.Y. Jacobson gave 20 classes on it. It's on, uh, it's on YouTube. People can find it if they want. I'm just saying this so that people can uh, go deeper if they want. In any case, so what we saw was that Reb Hillel changes the whole formula. The formula that we think of is that this is punishment, that this exile is punishment for our sins. And the Rebbe put up two, contra- two contradictions with that. The first contradiction was that even if you're, you're angry at someone, how long can you be angry at them? It doesn't make sense that you would be angry at them for so long. So even if there were sins, obviously there were, and there was some punishment. But that punishment f- f- lasted 60, 70 years. That's it. It's finished. After a generation, it's done. What's happening after that can't be explained the same way. The second contradiction, the second problem was that <coughs> even when you punish, your punishment gets weaker and weaker as time goes on you get softer because you um, slowly uh, make amends and, uh, and you feel less anger. The anger should subside. But here we see that it actually gets stronger as it were because the punishments keep getting worse. So he said that, so Rebbe Hul says that you can't understand this exile. This particular exile cannot be understood this way. He said, where, where do we, how, how do we need to understand this exile? We have to go back to the first exile. What we saw was that Moshe Rabbeinu, this the Rebbe didn't make a big deal out of him saying this now from the Mimer, Moshe Rabbeinu had the same questions about the exile in Egypt. He said, He says two things. He says, which seem to be a repetition, but they're not. First one is, why have you done or punished these people so much? And the second is, since I came, you punished them even more. He says, those are just two questions. That's the source of the two questions. Why have you punished them? Is a question of, why in the world are you even punishing them? What did they do? What did Yaakov and his children do that they deserve such punishment? So he goes back to the, to the bris. He says, that's when Hashem told us about this exile. Hashem told us about this exile. Right? Why? What did, what did Avram ever do? <laughs> <laughs> Would he ask the question? Because he asked the question, that's the, for that you punish them for 400 years. Or and secondly, from the time that you've sent me, it's become even worse. That's the second problem, that the, the anger is getting stronger. And, the Rebbe said, and this Rebbe expanded more. He said, in the beginning, as long as Yaakov was alive, the first 17 years of Yaakov were the best in Egypt. And then, until the, all the Shvatim pa- passed away, it was still it was normal, it was, uh, it was good. Then, once they passed away, the, the, the enslavement began, but it, but it was minor, and then it became worse and worse until Miriam was born. When Miriam was born, the last 86 years were the worst, because that's why she was called Miriam. The, the deep enslavement began. And then, when Moshe Rabbeinu came, they also weren't receiving uh, straw to make the bricks anymore, which made it even worse. So, you see these two, the, this parallel. What was Hashem's answer? Hashem's answer was, Ani Avaya. I am Hashem. What do you mean, I am Hashem? And Yavaya means, I am I'm a Lord of mercy, of compassion. I'm compassion. I'm now, what, what do you think, that, uh, that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a maniac? 
It, in fact, they even think that about when you actually ask this question, you can only come up, I think, I, I said this on Shabbos in, in, uh, in Shul, in the, in the Kanyon, that I think that if you ask these questions, if you allow yourself to ask these questions, it, it's cathartic because we don't allow ourselves to ask these questions. What Reb Hillel asks and what Reb asks in, in the Sicha is, is a question we never allow ourselves to ask. Because how can it be that Hashem is still angry after 2,000 years? Does that make any kind of sense? What are we dealing with? Does it, that, <laughs> that there's infinite anger? You'll never finish. There's no, there's no, life is not possible then. And you, and you know, um, that's exactly the, uh, somebody mentioned when I was teaching this uh, at home, one of the kids mentioned that this is the, this seems to be the Christian view of God that he's infinitely angry all the time and that the only other direction you can go in is, is, is like to forget it entirely about Sakhar Onish, it must be but what that caused us Jews to have is also a picture like that of some kind of purgatory that never ends but that's nonsense it, it, I had this picture in my head until I learned the Mishnah in Eduyos in Eduyos there's a Mishnah that said there's a machlokas between Rabbi Akiva and I think Rabbi Shmau how long is Mishpat HaRashem Begenum? How long is a person in Gehenum for? So they, they debate between 49 days and, and, and 11 months. Mi Pesach HaDatzeret is Rabbi Akiva, he's lenient. And Rabbi Shmuel says it's a whole year, 11 months, less than a year. We do. I, I, I always thought it was forever. Where did I get that from? I think I got it from the Christians. Who got it from from this picture of the Jews? Look at what happens when somebody doesn't do what God wants, because that's their that's their claim. Uh, so forever they're condemned. But, but that's crazy because if you don't ask this question, what are you doing, Hashem? How long are you going to be angry? Then then, then you don't you, you don't free yourself from this terrible accusation against ourselves and against Hashem, which doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so the Rebbe's answer, and Rebbe, based on Rebbe's answer, is that you, you can't understand this exile that way. What's happening is that it's like a Rav preparing in mid-class a new idea to give to a student. Why is it in the middle of the class? So when it's in the middle, he didn't have time to prepare. And he suddenly is inspired by some new thought. So now it takes some time. So uh, immediately the next question, and I think we asked this question, is so it takes you 2,000 years to prepare the new thought? <laughs> it's, it's a sham. What are you talking about? The problem is the student. The problem is not the Rav. The problem is the student. Why did the new thought, so Rabbi Hill in the, in the, in the minor, he adds something more. He says, I think the Rebbe said this here, that the reason that this new inspiration came in the first place is because the Rav saw that the student already understands the present explanation. He, he's already, he, he's already, he, he already uh, uh, um, uh, uh, internalized the previous explanation. He sees that he's ready for something more. The Rav always had this other explanation. He just wasn't ready to teach it. What does it mean he wasn't ready to teach it? To teach it means that the student has to be at a whole new level of openness to accepting something new. He has to be at a whole new level. That level is not a change in the Rav. That level is a change in the student, much more than it is a change in the Rav. Meaning that there's an element of becoming more open, more battle, more nullified towards the will of the teacher, what the teacher is teaching, in order to be able to uh, internalize this new thought. It's not just that the Rav has to prepare. Now, the Rav on his end, what, is, what does it mean he has to prepare? So Rav Hill doesn't say it explicitly, he can't say he says it explicitly, but, but he, 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 he wrote the big commentary on Shari Yichud. In Shari Yichud, he explains, he explains, his commentary on Shari Yichud, Rav Hill explains that for the, the process of the Rav explaining something is a process of creating a new world. Right? There's 22 levels that the Rav has to go through, which Rav Hill and Shari Yichud explains, what the Mittler Rebbe means is that he's going through a process of creating the world in which this new information will make sense, in which this new svara, this new explanation will make sense. You have to create the world. It doesn't exist yet. 
So today we would say, oh, you have to make the props, you have to make a, an overhead, you have, uh, you, right, you have to make a PowerPoint, you have, to, you have to create a whole world, you have to create a whole movie, whatever it is, in order to get the point across, otherwise it's not going to get across. Even if the student is very, very wise and has tremendous bitol, he still cannot, because it's such a mind-boggling idea. It's so different from everything you've seen that if you don't do this, then you, you won't be able to understand it. If the Rav doesn't prepare all this, either. so what has Hashem been doing for the last 2,000 years? He's been preparing a new world. That's exactly what the Prophet say. Isaiah says, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth. What do you mean? Is he creating a different uh, atmosphere? No. He's creating a new reality that we can't understand. Now, if you look at the reality that we're in today, if you don't understand that this is a different reality than what there was 200, 200 years ago even, all the more so from 2,000 years ago, this is a different world. The fact, even you and I are not the same as, as people were 200 years ago. We're not the same. Up to 200 years ago, you could have said, people were pretty much lived the same for the last 5,000 years. From the time they emerged from the Stone Age into the Bronze Age, pretty much everything is the same. Uh, there's been a little tinkering here and there. The moment that the first industrial revolution started, the moment that Hasidus started on the other side, the spirituality and the physicality of this world is different. We're in a different world. If you don't understand that, you don't understand where we are. This is a different planet. It's not what there was in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. We are living in a world that is trying to teach us, Hashem is trying to teach us a new uh, understanding of what it means to be a human being completely new understanding. It was never understood before. That's what Mashiach does. So he says, the longer it takes, so says the Rebbe, if, from this you understand that the longer it takes to prepare this answer, the more revolutionary it is. The more amazing this answer is. What, what, what is this new teaching? This new teaching is what we call Torah HaDashem Yitzitzit, that a new interpretation of Torah <coughs> is going to come out of me, says Hashem. Okay. Can we continue? Section 5? We have time. It doesn't look that good. Hochacha muchacha. What? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did this. Right. Okay, Vav. So, section 6. Ulefi amur yuvan anemar ba midrash, beshaash and ichnesu anochim. This we learned also. We saw this. So, what did we not finish? Zain? So says the Rebbe, what is the point of this whole sikha? What do we get from it, from this mimer? In serving Hashem. In spite of the darkness of this exile. In darkness, what does darkness mean? He said it before, but we didn't expand on it. The darkness was in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, that Paro says, I don't know who Hashem is. And why should they send, set the people free? What do you mean you don't know who Hashem is? The whole point of the... the Adam Arisha knew who created him. He knew he was created. He passed this down to all his uh, descendants. Says Rebbe in the Maimur, this is the first time that a leader in the world completely... Uh, how do you say Kfira? Uh, Kfira, what do you say? Kfira. In, in English it's like heresy, but it's, it's the wrong word. But he's, complete, he's completely denying God's existence. Who's God? Now I am, he says. I'm God, I've never heard of your God, I don't know who you are. What do you mean? The, uh, you're saying that the whole project of the world is now in jeopardy. That was the kfir then. What's the kfir today? What's the darkness of the goal is today? So, so Moshe Rabbeinu comes and says, this I've never heard. That someone would come and say, because the first, first paro, when he met Yosef, he says, <laughs> he acknowledges God right away. <clears throat> he sees that Yosef is, 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 is inspired by godliness. So, so, what's going on with the, so what's going on with this paro? What's the, what's the cure in our, what's the denial in our generation? It's no longer that God's not God, that, that's old. What's the new, what's the new cure? And at the time when you understand this, it's mind-boggling, you think about this. When Hashem gave the Torah, the entire world shook. The entire world heard the Torah, at some level. 
everybody knew that something had changed in the world. Am Yisrael was at Mount Sinai to receive it, but everybody else was moved by it. They had to be moved. What happened? This I can't prove. But one of the things that happened when Am Yisrael came out of Egypt was that all the empires that existed were destroyed. We came onto a, a blank slate. The world was like a blank slate. There was nobody more. There, there was no empires to fight. You could come and march in wherever you wanted. That was one of the things that the Torah did. It, it leveled everything. As he says, the whole world knew that we received the Torah. For, 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 for 3,000 years, basically, basically for 3,000 years, the entire, Torah, the entire world knew that we had Torah that was given by God. What happened 300 years ago? The biggest heresy ever, the biggest denial ever, that the Torah is not from heaven. It started coming with uh, biblical criticism that was aimed at the Christians, and then became biblical criticism for the Jews. And now you almost don't have a Jew who believes that the Torah was given from, uh, from heaven. That's how deep this heresy is. It's unbelievable. So he says, th that's the darkness of the Gaulus. Anyway, I think he started. So. I don't know if we'll, we'll read this uh, tomorrow. We need to move on to uh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about where we're going to live tomorrow. You don't want to learn here? Oh, because you have to be early. So, so I'll find a place to dive. It's not a big deal, but we'll learn. Uh, you want to come to me? You want to come to my house? We'll learn in my house. Yeah, even earlier if you want. It's fine. Yeah.